Let's set up AppLocker to work with our Windows 10 host. I'm starting out in my domain controller because I need to create an organizational unit to apply this new group policy we're going to create. Now, we're not using the local group policy. We're going to be using the group policy on the domain controller itself. And we also need to be using the enterprise version of Windows 10. So I'm going to create a new organizational unit. And here I'll just type in clients as the name. And I'm going to move my client one into clients. Click on clients, make sure it's there, and there it is, client one. Now I want to open up group policy management. So I'll click tools and go to group policy management from my server manager. And this is where I'm going to be able to configure the group policy to apply towards my new client OU. And here it is. So I'm going to right click and choose create a GPO or group policy object in this domain and link it here. And I'm going to call this one the App Locker GPO. And click OK. And now I'm going to enforce it. We want to make sure it's enforced so that way nothing above it can block it. Now I'll right click and edit it. And we'll go to Policies under Computer Configuration. So this, once again, is being applied towards the computer, not towards the user. We'll be able to lock it down to specific users, but it has to apply towards the computer. Click on Windows Settings, Security Settings, System Services. And what we want to do is go to Application Identity, double-click, and make sure it starts up automatically. That's required in order for AppLocker to make sure it applies it to the right person or, or group. Now we want to go to Application Control Policies. And you'll notice that there's a Software Restriction Policies right above it. That's the older version prior to AppLocker. It's not quite as sophisticated. It doesn't offer as many options. But it's also available in case you have computers that are Windows 10 Professional instead of Enterprise. And those can be affected by doing the Software Restriction Policy. But if we have Enterprise computers, we can use AppLocker instead. So we're going to expand AppLocker. The first one is executable rules, which have to do with EXEs. Then we have Windows installer rules, scripts, and packages. So let's start with the executable rules, and we're going to right-click and choose to create a default rules. So what this does for us is it creates rules that show us what's already happening. And that is that everyone can run any application. However, the built-in administrators have the full right to create applications as well. Then we have the Windows installer rules. And we're going to do the same thing here. You'll notice we have the options on all four of these to create a new rule. But without the default rules, then we could actually end up blocking things instead of allowing them. Then we have the automatically generate rules. And that's also an option as well. And it could end up saving time if you have a lot of computers that are all running the same applications. But in our case, we want to be a little bit more custom, so we're going to do the create default rules and then create custom rules underneath them. Then we'll go to scripts, and we'll do the same thing, and packaged app rules. You'll notice there's just one packaged app rule. It's not quite as sophisticated as some of these other ones. Now we want to create our first custom rule. If we right-click and choose to create a new rule, this is going to be a custom rule, and a wizard comes up. So we'll click Next. Now we've already got everyone set to Allow. So what we want to do here is set to Deny. We don't need to create an Allow rule anymore. And we can apply it towards a user or a group. I'm going to leave this one set to Everyone, but we're going to lock something down in one of our future ones. So let's click Next. And now we have three different options for the primary condition. And I want to show you each one of these because they each work a little different way. So let's start with the Publisher. So if I want to browse, and what I'm going to do is pick on Firefox here for a second. I use Firefox. I think it's a good program. But I'm just going to use this as an example. And we go to Downloads, and we see there's a Firefox installer. And this is an executable. So we'll choose Open. And we can see the publisher is Mozilla, the product name, etc. 
So I can block all these different things based on all this information. Or I can slide it up and say, you know what, don't worry about the file version, just worry about these top three items. Or don't worry about the file name or the file version, just worry about the product name. Or say, you know what, block everything from Mozilla or any publisher. Of course, that would be bad because it would block everything. Let's go back and choose a path instead. So I'm going to click on path, click next, and now we see the option for browse files or folders. And basically these are the same thing. So if I click browse folders, it looks that way. If I click browse files, it looks that way. So there's really no difference in what it does. It's just the way it's presented. I'm going to go once again to our downloads folder and there's my Firefox installer. Click open. And now what we're going to do is we're going to block the executable for the Firefox installer. Click next. Now there is an option for an exception based on publisher, path, or file hash, but in this case it doesn't really make any sense to add those. But I'm going to click previous and go back and choose our file hash. This is a rule for an application that is not signed, so it gives us the ability to block unsigned applications. So once again, I can browse, pick our Firefox installer, click next. And if I wanted to, I could click Create. So now you get the idea of what each of these three things does. Let's go ahead and block an application. But we're not going to choose the Firefox executable. We'll choose something different. And I'm going to go by Path. And I'm going to browse the file. And I'm going to pick something in the Windows System 32 folder. There's a lot of different applications that come in here. So I'm just going to pick a really simple one that a lot of people use, and that's going to be our calculator. So I'm going to say you cannot use the calculator. No one is allowed to use it. No reason to add a publisher exception. So we'll click Next. And we can put in a description as well if we want. And click Create. Now we see that no one should be able to run the calculator. Let's go down and choose to create a Windows installer rule. Right-click, choose Create New Rule. Click Next, and once again, we'll choose Deny, Next, and once again, we'll choose a path. And we'll browse to that file. And this time, instead of an executable, we see it's picking an MSI file. So we need to find an MSI file that we would like to block. And I've downloaded one in my Downloads folder, and it's Adobe Air. So we'll say, you know what, you cannot install that application. And if you can't install it, you certainly can't run it. Click Next, don't need an exception, and click Create. Now we'll do a script rule. We'll right-click on that, choose to create a new rule. Once again, we'll choose Deny. We'll choose a path, and we'll browse files. Now this time it's looking for a PowerShell script. We also have the option to block a batch file, a command prompt, JavaScript, as well as VB script. So if we wanted to find one of those, we could do that. I've created a batch file. So I'm going to choose the batch file. And I've put it into the downloads folder. And there it is, software.bat. So I'm going to block this script from being able to be run. No exception needed and click Create. So now we've blocked three different kinds of files. Let's click on Packaged App Rules. and We'll click Create a New Rule. Click Next. Once again, Deny. And this time we're going to choose a specific person. And if you're not sure, just click Advanced and choose Find Now, and it finds everyone. We'll expand that. And I've scrolled down. Let's go ahead and choose Harry and say, Harry cannot run this packaged app. Click Next. Use an installed packaged app as a reference. We can click Select. And look at all these different package names that we can pick. Let's say, cannot run Cortana. Click OK. And we see it fills in all the information in the bottom. It's the Microsoft Publisher, package name, package version. And once again, we can slide this up or down to decide if we want to choose all three of these or if we want to choose just one or two. We could also choose use a packaged app installer as a reference. And instead of looking 
at a packaged app from all the different applications that have been installed, this is looking for an AppX file. Now we don't have any AppX files, but if we did, we could go ahead and choose those. Let's go back and choose our original one. Click next, no exception needed and click create. So we've created app locker rules to block all four different types of applications as well as executables and scripts. I'm gonna boot up a Windows 10 computer that's logged into the domain, and we should see that we are able to block the calculator from being able to be run. I've created a shortcut from the system32calc.exe on the desktop, but before I try to run that, I wanna make sure that the application identity service is running because by default it's not, but we enabled it in group policy. So there it is, application identity, and it is running. And let's also make sure it's set to automatic, and it is, and it's grayed out so we can't change that. So fantastic, that part of the group policy worked. Another thing we can do is to go in and check to make sure the group policy got applied. So if we right click on a command prompt, choose run as administrator, and we'll put in our administrator credentials. There we are. And then we'll type in GP result slash R. And we'll scroll up to the computer settings and we see app locker did get applied. So that we are in good shape there. The reason I did the administrator command prompt is because if we did this as a user command prompt, it will only show us the group policies that are applied towards user settings, not towards computer settings. So you need to have the administrator command prompt in order to see the computer settings applied group policy objects. All right, let's do the test. Let's see if our calculator will run. Double click. And look at that, the app has been blocked by your system administrator. So App Locker is working as advertised. Once again, this was done on a Windows 10 Enterprise computer, as well as a Windows Server 2019 domain controller that is controlling this computer because the computer is a member of that domain. AppLocker can do a very good job blocking applications that the administrator may feel is a security risk or for which the organization does not have a license.